The ZipCrunch Dialer allows for complete customization of voice messages as well as unique information like name and account number to be included in your voice broadcast messages. Once you log into your Vaspian Dialer, you're going to go up to the top right and select Create a Voice Broadcast. You can name your campaign whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to name mine Blast Campaign just so I know what type of message I'm running. My caller ID name is going to be set as my company name. You can set it as an acronym if you want to. I have my caller ID number. Now this is something that we put in the system since we need to confirm that it is a number that you do own, but we can add as many numbers as you need to. So if I go down, I'm just going to have the office's main 716 number in there, and that's the one I'm going to choose. Beneath that are the never call before and never call after options. Now those mean that the campaign is never going to make a call before 8 a.m. in a specific time zone and never make a call after 9 p.m. in a specific time zone. Now in order to figure out what time zone it's in, it's going to base that off the area code of the phone number. It's not 100% foolproof. Um, it will catch most issues that you have and help keep you within compliance. Underneath that is my paired location option. That would be a feature that you would set up with us specifically that has regional caller ID numbers and it would show that instead of the caller ID number that I have set up here. Next, I'll go to options and I see my transfer to and my transfer backup. Now the transfer to number I'm going to set as my 716 again. I can choose to do the same number or I can choose to do different numbers. Since I'm running a voice over IP, I'm just going to choose the same number. Um, underneath that, I have my calls per hour. So my calls per hour, I'm going to take into consideration how many people I have answering the phones and how many transfers I think that they can handle and, you know, the average amount of transfers that I'm going to most likely get back from the file that I'm uploading. So we suggest starting between 500 and 1,000 if you're unsure, and then you can always adjust from there. I'm going to set mine to 1,000. I'm not going to do anything with redial settings. And then for the campaign itself, I'm going to choose leave a message and record transfers. Leave a message means that it's just going to leave a voicemail if no one picks up. And record transfers is not anything for audio. It's actually in regards to statistics. If I don't have this checked, the data on the campaign may not be correct, and it's not going to tell you that anybody's transferring over to you in the system. So your information is going to look skewed. Finally, if I go to keys, I'm going to see a couple different options under here. The only one I'm worried about is going to be my transfer key. I can set it to any number I want, but we would suggest setting it to one or zero since those are most frequently used. And if someone wasn't paying attention, that would most likely be the one that they would select. Now that I have my keys set and my settings in place, I'm going to hit create. And now I can see the campaign itself. First thing I'm gonna do is set my messages. So I'm gonna go to add or upload message and I'm gonna choose my broadcast message and my voicemail. Now, when I'm making my messages, I tend to name the audio file exactly what it's going to be set as. So my broadcast gets set as my broadcast and my voicemail gets set as my voicemail. That way it's easier and I don't have to think too hard about it. Now I'm gonna hit copy sound files and I'm gonna see that up in the top right of the campaign, the little message set icon will appear. Once my message is set, I can go in and I can do add or recycle contacts. And I'm going to leave it as upload a CSV file and hit go. Here, I'm going to choose load CSV file and I'm going to choose my CSV itself. And it's going to load up a sample of what your file looks like. So you're going to see all the columns and then you're going to see the first four rows of those columns. And what I'm going to do with this screen is map out that CSV that I uploaded. So I'm going to tell the system what fields to upload and what that field is. So for the names, I'm going to find the 
field that is associated and matches. So first name as first name, last name as last. Um, I'm not doing anything with the address, email, or what they're interested in. So I'm going to ignore those. And then I'm going to go down to reference and set that as my account number. And I'm going to set all of my phone fields as a phone option. You do have to have the phone within the stars used and then you can use those other fields. If I scroll down, I'm going to see a few options are already selected. Randomize, which means that it's going to jump around that CSV. My prevent duplicate phone number in file. That means if a phone number shows up in there multiple times, it's only going to load one instance of it. So you don't have to worry about multiple calls to the same person. Beneath that is going to be my scrub against our do not call list. If you are utilizing that, it's just going to take out any of those numbers that were on your do not call. Finally, I'm going to check I'm allowed to call these contacts and hit upload. This just says that it might take a few minutes to upload depending on the file size. As you can see, before I was even done saying that, it had already uploaded in the system. Now that that's uploaded, you can see some information like the total contacts. And if I hover over this here, I can see how many are called versus uncalled and how many of those contacts are currently out of time zone. Now that's based off of those do not call before and do not call after parameters that we set up earlier. So now that the campaign is done being programmed, I'm going to send myself a test call. I'm just going to hit that little paper airplane and I'm going to put my phone number in that I want it to reach out to and I'm going to hit OK. It's going to say test call sent and I can close out of that and it's going to ring into my office phone. Now when I get the call in it's going to say the phone number that I entered into the system as well as the caller ID. So in my case it's showing that 9612120 in Vaspian. Um, if you had it set as a toll-free, it would show your toll-free number or something like that. As long as that test message sounds good, I'm ready to just hit that play button. And then whenever I want to stop it, I can hit this pause or stop button right here. And that's it for setting a blast campaign.